Now watch, I'm going to open Kwanzaa and it's going to just completely freak. I have to learn how to talk slow for my computer. So a lot of these, like I said, a lot of these homeworks are portions of your final project. So it's kind of like double dipping. This is an example. Homework 10, the vertical bandsaw practicum is going to be taking one of the aluminum sheets we have, which are 12 by 12 inches, I believe, and you'll be cutting out raw stock out of that 12 by 12 for this base plate down here. Now, a couple of hints. Number one, I only bought enough material. So I got a 12 by 12. You ought to be able to get that base plate part out of that. And another one out of that. Okay. And then I believe this top plate here fits here. And then there's a couple other little pieces like this little plate that should fit somewhere in here. Okay, and I think there's some other pieces. Didn't we have other pieces? The rigid arm fits in there as well. All right. Then, so when and when he says rigid arm, that's for you groups that had three people. That's that long arm, that optional arm for the groups with three. That fits in there. And then also this adapter plate up here will fit in there as well. And that little round plate up there. So that fits in there so, somehow. So out of a 12 by 12, Two groups ought to be able to get pieces cut out of here. So you need to coordinate with another group and not chop this plate up so bad that you can't get all those pieces out of it. Okay? Um, and Werder here needs a group. So if anybody has two and wants a third, you probably get a lot less work if you get a third. So take, take them on. Okay? One more hint. I want to give you one more hint. When you bandsaw a piece of material, the edges are rough. You're going to use a milling machine and end mills from, that you've learned about in these tooling quizzes to cut it much more accurately and much more smoothly. So you're going to cut this part off. So you need to leave some room between here and there so that there is something to cut off. See what I mean? But it can't be so much room that these won't fit in this plate. I believe I gave, uh, and also the bandsaw blade has a thickness, right? So you need to be careful cutting these out. So what I would do is take this 12 by 12, take a scribe, have we showed them the scribe? And I would scribe out your cuts. Now, if this thing was going to be six inches by four inches, would you scribe right at six and right at four? You'd give it a little bit extra, right? So if I were you, I would probably give it at least 30, but probably 60 thousandths extra on each side. But coordinate with the second group and figure carefully scribe this out before you cut. You've heard measure twice, cut once, right? Take that to heart. So this is kind of the layout you're going to use to make sure it all fits. You got any questions there? So remember, this is your final solid cam project. Homework 10 is going to be to just literally use the bandsaw to cut this base plate out roughly so that you could then machine it later. Just the base plate. So, 
you can read it here in D2L. First step is to cut the raw aluminum stock to an appropriate length such that it can be clamped into the CNC machine, which means you don't want to cut it exact because it won't finish the part. All right. Um, the way you're going to turn it in, you only get one piece. So if you make a mistake, you either have to replace it at your cost or sacrifice points on the assignment. Okay. You need to turn in your piece cleaned with soap and water and deburred edges so I don't cut myself. And you need to write your team members' names on the piece of material. So if you have a group of three, you'll have three people's names on there. So I can grade all three of you. If you have a group of two, you'll have two people's names on there with a Sharpie marker so I can wipe it off later. Is that clear? You'll be turning that in Wednesday. So you just have to cut, scribe that out and cut it out. shouldn't take you too long. All right. Homework 11 is your vertical bandsaw or horizontal bandsaw practicum. This is not for your final project. This is its own homework. What you're going to be doing over a series of homeworks is making me new blocks for next year. Okay? But in the process, you're going to learn some really good stuff. You're going to learn how to square a block manually, which is an extremely important uh, to, uh, machining technology process. Um, did, they, did you explain that yet? Or is that I have not. I'll do that when we talk about the milling machine one, I believe, first. Okay, so this is, this is, this will be, you'll be lectured on how to square a block. But the first step is to cut this to the raw dimension and if this was a one inch, I'm, we're going to give you one inch by one inch aluminum bar. If I want this other dimension to be one inch, would I bandsaw it right at one inch? No, I bandsaw it a little bit bigger so that I can cut some off this side and cut some off this side and make it smooth and nice. You'll also be learning how to drill and how to ream. So use a reamer, which is a precision drill. Okay, so you'll be, you'll be making one of these and you'll be learning a lot of stuff and that's over a couple of homeworks. Homework 11 is only to come in and bandsaw this on the horizontal bandsaw. You will then clean it, deburr it, turn it into me with your name on it. And I want you to use an engraver to put your name on it. Okay? Just so you can see an engraver. Any questions for homework 11, which is due also on Wednesday? Okay? Now don't freak out. This is cutting something on the bandsaw. Th this homework really shouldn't take you more than 10 minutes. Maybe 15. Tops. Okay? All right. And then, I told you, you weren't going to be bored. Mm -hmm. You also need to watch the manual knee mill video. And then Professor Hodgkinson is going to explain finer points of that in lecture. And you need to do the SOLIDWORKS tutorial on fillets. Questions? That's all the stuff that's assigned. Due tomorrow is homework four, which was the file that I'm going to send to ITL to rapid prototype your Legos. That's that half scale file with some style in it, you know, like your initials or something in an STL format. So you're going to be graded on if it's turned in on time, if it's in the right format, if it's half scale, if it prints out correctly. Okay. That file is due tomorrow. You can upload that to D2L. Homework 7 is due tomorrow, which is creating two parts and assembly and the two drawings for those parts. Those parts should be parts that you're going to use in your final SOLIDWORKS project. So that's a double dip as well. But I'm looking for five files. Two parts, two drawings for those parts, and an assembly. Yes? Do you care how we name them? I don't really care how you name them. Um, I feel like it's fine because I think your name gets tagged on Dropbox. So I think that's fine. I, I don't think I really care how you name it. Um, 
your drawings need to be on your templates. Now your templates can be modified. You can make them cooler if you want, but I don't want to see drawings on a blank piece of paper or on a SolidWorks uh, template. I want your template on there, something that's obviously yours. Yes. Uh, is that on the D2L assignment? Yeah, on the calendar, on the calendar it says to do that. I, I should. You're right. I'll make it consistent. So no drawings? No, I want drawings because you're gonna have to do drawings for your final final project anyway. Mm -hmm. So you might as well just do them now. Um, so I'll add that. Uh, any, any other questions? Um, take home quiz three. You, uh, Professor Hodgkinson is going to explain that, the drill and tap quiz. Do you want to push it to Wednesday? Sure. Okay, so we're going to give you another day on the drill and tap quiz. The, the good news is that you have another day. The bad news is that there's a lot of stuff due on Wednesday. So you might want to start doing stuff now so that you don't have so much on Wednesday. All right. Do you want to go ahead and explain that? Yes. And then I'll, I'll pull up files for you if you need. Can you pull up our Excel sheet? Yeah. So this is part two. I think I've talked about it when we were lecturing about this, but I'll cover it again. So in the Excel sheet, this assigned assemblies that's on D2L for quizzes, drill and tap quiz, there's an Excel sheet with your name and then an assembly, either A or B column, and then which side that you can see it pulled up there. Pull that up, Professor, whenever you get a chance. And then a screw size for the X hole, a screw size for the Y hole, and a screw size for the Z hole. So this is for assembly two. This is for assembly one. Again, corresponding screw hole Y, X, and Z. So the way I'm going to grade this is I'll have a series of screws. So let's pick on Mr. McCusker here. He is student number one, randomly assigned number. He's going to be doing assembly number one, which will be this. So you'll want to take out this drawing. And I'm asking for the drill that you use, the speed that you actually use on the milling machine. So remember, I want you to go through that equation, calculate the spindle speed according to that equation, the material that you will use with the drill size and then also the feed rate. I want you to write down what you actually used, and the feed rate's gonna be approximate because we're not having fine control over that, just kind of what you thought you did. And then the amount of PEC that you took off each time if you used a PEC. And I'll be grading this, I'll have a series of screws. If the screw fits in the Y hole, like it should fit for a loose fit, you'll get full credit for the actual practicum, and then full credit will be awarded for good values that you actually write in on this piece of paper. This piece of paper with your name on it will be turned in with your completed parts. So there's one steel part and one aluminum part for everybody in this baggie. Okay, so fold it up and put it in the baggie and then that's how we'll collect it. Does that all make sense? use the drill press or we can use an end mill if there's a lot of people. So we'll get the milling machine set up so that they can be used as a drill press. Okay. And if you have any questions, I don't think I quite covered exactly how to turn it on or how to move it up and down, but I'll try and do that tomorrow or if you're in there, we can help you out with that as well. Try and use the drill press because I want you to get familiar with that machine. Okay. All right, so we're going to leave. I'll leave it up to you guys to pull up or you can see here really quick which assembly you'll have, and then at the end of class today, either take a piece of paper for assembly number one or a piece of paper for assembly number two, and then the baggies, and I'll put them all over there, and then that'll be the official assignment for the part two of the drill and tap quiz. Yes? Just to illustrate that where we drill the holes has been super important. Oh, correct. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah, so if you notice my drawing, I say about 0.2 inches from here, about 28 inches from this corner. Those are just approximate, as long as the assembly kind of looks like this. Okay, I'm not really grading on 
the location of these holes. This is only focused on the correct size drill bit, spindle speed, RPM, everything for the actual hole itself. And if the screw fits in the hole as it's supposed to for either a loose fit or a free fit, or in the case of the tap hole, if the correct size screw screws into the tap hole. The intent here is it, the intent here is so that you understand how to select the proper drill size for either a tapped hole or a clearance hole, and for you to get a feel for what it feels like to drill through aluminum and to drill through stain, uh, steel, and for you to get to understand how to tap a hole, put threads in a hole, and to understand the feeling, what it feels like to tap aluminum or steel. So that's we're just. We're trying to get you to understand selecting drill sizes, spindle speeds, and how it feels to actually machine these things. So the, the actual dimensions, the accuracy of these dimensions doesn't really matter in this exercise. All right. And then this chart is on D2L. I don't know if you saw me navigate to that, but it's under uh, content quizzes, drill and tap quiz, and assigned assemblies. And then the, I think the pa those are the PDFs. Those are the PDFs of these files that you have. So if you lose the papers, you can reprint it out. Any other questions on all these homeworks? Uh, when is drilling the actual box doing? Which box? Uh, the box that we turn in the. The electronics box. box? Yeah. Yeah, that's quiz four. That's building this box, a physical this box. That's due Wednesday. It's on the calendar. That one didn't change. I've updated the calendar and I'll re-upload it after class today so that the calendar will be correct at, at about noon. Professor, are you guys going to be in the shop tomorrow morning at 8? Probably. It'll, it'll probably be open. We're usually around here at 730. Oh, okay. I, didn't, I didn't come today, but <laughs> probably tomorrow. Other questions? Let me make another announcement with regards to the drilling quiz. So after the lecture from Professor Rowe here, we'll be handing out the tooling quiz. There's one part that asks about these materials, these uh, end mills here. So we only have three of these end mills. So again, they'll be placed on that table. And you'll have to just come up and look at a, B, and C, and then go out and fill out the corresponding questions for the quiz. Okay. I'll be done then. All right. If we're done with questions there, we're going to go into drawings a little bit. Everybody good? All right, so I want to go into uh, some drawing stuff. Get rid of some toolbars here. Um, this class isn't going to make you professional draftsmen. That's not what you're here to be. You're here to be engineers. But I want to give you some basic ideas about uh, drawings and drawing views so you have some basic understanding, at least so that uh, you've, you've got enough to be able to read a print and understand what some of the notations are on, on the prints. So I've got this uh, female box here and I was going to make a drawing out of it. Um, actually, you know what? I don't want to use the sheet metal anymore. I'm going to open something else. Why don't we open uh, something from the solid cam final project maybe the base plate because you're about to cut that for homework 10 Uh, that's not the right base plate. Bottom plate, they must have called it. Oh, 
I should have hit cancel. It's looking for solid cam and I don't have my little dongle so it's not going to find the license. Um, just cancel please. So if you have solid cam operations written within SolidWorks but it can't find the license, it will still open and solid cam will still be there but you won't be able to modify the solid cam tool pass. All right, so here's a here's the base plate. You're going to saw this roughly out for homework 10. And again, I like I said, I'm warning you, be careful. Measure two or three times and cut once because you're not getting another piece of aluminum. You're either going to lose some points or you're going to have to go get yourself another piece. Um, okay, let's say I want to make a drawing from this part. So go to File, Make Drawing from Part. And I'm going to use my title block. And I want to make sure it's the right size. I want an, in this case, I want an eight and a half by eleven. So usually it shows up, but it's not showing up. That one's pretty close. Let's see. Is a zero? Is, I forget which one is which for SolidWorks. Well, let's let's change it to 8.5 inches by 11 inches, and I want it landscaped. So let's let's do it the other way. Okay. So there's an eight and a half by 11, and it's my template. So it's got my little little. Uh, title block here and that's what I keep meaning by when I say you know use your own template use your own title block you can constantly change your title block I don't care from homework one if you if you improve it that's fine but I just want to see something that made it yours and not somebody else's so I can tell you did some work okay now we want to insert drawing views and I'm going to go into a bunch of different drawing views All right, the most common that people start with, oops, insert drawing view from a model. The most common is this standard three view, and it asks what model you want, and uh, I've got that bottom plate open, so it assumes bottom plate, but you can go browse for a different one. The most common is a standard three view. Now, in this case, I don't think we really need a three view because most of the critical information we have is off of um, is is on this view and really the only information we need here is the thickness of the plate so in this case I don't think we really need um, a three view but I, I show it to you because I want you to understand how these three views work. So when you go between views, so let's say I'm looking at this eraser and this is a view. When I go up to the next view here or the next view here or here or here, the convention is for you to pretend that this sheet you're looking at is a bowl, like a bowl of cereal. And this thing's in the bottom of the bowl of cereal. And if you move from this view to any other view, it's as if you're sliding the piece up the side of the bowl. So that, like that, like that, like that, like that. Okay? Do not confuse people because that's the standard convention. Do not confuse people by taking a view like this and then when you want to go see this side view flipping it this way that's not how it works it's as if you're in a bowl and you have to put maintain pressure on the bottom of the bowl and when you go to the next view you have to slide it up the side of the bowl you get it 
which is different than that. Okay? Slide it up the side of the bowl. You understand that? Okay. So, if you notice, you can see that here, I've got countersinks on this side. So when I take this view and slide it to the next view, my countersink should be in here. Now they're not shown because in this view, the hidden stuff isn't shown, but I can drop it in with this button. And you see the countersinks are on the appropriate side. So SolidWorks automatically does that, but it doesn't do that for individual views. So you need to be a little careful. Don't confuse people with that. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to delete this one. I didn't really need both of these views. And it makes these awfully small on the paper, right? So I kind of want to make this one bigger. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, let's see, two to one's too big. How about, well, was, is one to one good? One to one's probably too big. Yep. So I probably want, um, 0.5 to one. Uh, that's not too bad. Although we could probably get bigger. I think I would. So how about how about 0.75 to 1? That looks pretty cool. And then really all I need on the other side of this view is the uh, roll this over to, for a thickness because there's not this part isn't all that complicated. So um, I can go insert drawing view. Bottom plate and I want probably oh, also see I think I can insert a projected view. Yeah, so did you see what I did there? I'll do that again. So I just want to go from this view to that view. So I go to insert, drawing view, projected. I hover over, uh, I have to select this view, and then I can just drag to the right and drop that view in. Okay? Now, you have to decide if this information we have here is useful. So you've got countersinks and all these holes in here. You got to decide if that's useful. In my case, in this case, I don't think this is all that useful. So I'm not going to have all this hidden line stuff. I'm just going to have the view be that simple. Now, there is one item I missed. Notice these two holes here, and those mount the little electronics box. So I really do need a view for that. So I did need three views. I'm going to drag drag this view up a little bit so I've got some room. Uh, if it lets me. There we go. And I'm probably going to drag this one over a little bit. If it lets me. And then I'll insert a drawing view projected from this drawing view down here. Why did I go down versus put one up top? Because of the bowl. I wanted to see these little holes. That's all I really needed. So I had to move that as in the bowl so I can see them here. 
And then I also don't want all that superfluous information and all these hidden holes back here because all I'm trying to show in this view is these holes. So I'll go to this view and I'll hide those things as well. All I want to see is the visible stuff. Okay, questions there. So we've got standard three view, we've got other views, we've got the bowl, and we've got projected views. You want to have enough views to show enough information for the machinist. Okay, let's do a little bit of dimensioning before we go to some other types of views. Um, so, for example, on this view, all we really need is the thickness of the plate. And if you wanted to, you could delete this view and use this view for that same information. And you could still get away with just two views. There's not much, there's not much going on here. Okay, so I might, I might actually do that. Um, I might want to insert an isometric view. Those are pretty handy for machinists just to look at them. So bottom plate and isometric or diametric or trimetric. Um, that's no good. I don't want that. There should be an isometric view there. Another thing you can do is go to current. And you could twist this so that it, I can see these end holes and I can see kind of these holes. And then I can go to that drawing view. I should be able to insert current. current model view and then that gives me a nice little view there of what it sort of should finish out to be. Now most, you, you don't want to put any dimensions on this and reference anything. This is just for visual, just for the machinist to say okay I sort of understand what it looks like in 3D. Okay. Alright so I'm going to dimension this one first because it's the most simple. So in this case, a smart dimension on this edge might make some sense. That tells me it's quarter inch. I'm going to drag it down here so that it's kind of out of the way of, of here, of this view. You can There's all kinds of stuff you can change. You can change the leaders, which are these arrows and these little lines. You can make them thicker. You can get rid of the arrows. You can change the arrow style. So you can do all kinds of stuff there. Units, you can change your precision if you want to. Like I said, in general with machine tool technology, we can pretty much easily get plus or minus five thousandths with the conventional machine tools. So a three-place decimal might want to be plus or minus five thousandths. In this case, the quarter inch doesn't matter all that much. It's a nominal plate size. So that plate may come in as 248 or 24 or 252, something like that, or maybe even more than 5,000 soft. And I don't really care in this case if it's 10,000 soft in thickness, right? So in this case, maybe I do want it only to two decimal places so that the machinist knows that I only care on a two place decimal to plus or minus 10. Now that material is definitely going to come in from the factory as plus or minus 10. So now the machinist knows, hey, I don't have to machine this plate. If it came in at uh, 258, I don't have to cut 8 thousandths off this plate. I can just go to town. Okay? So you as the engineer should think about your tolerances as you go. All right. Uh, on this view, I would, as I showed you, uh, this, this might be a good place for ordinate dimensions. So I may call this edge uh, zero, and then this whole center, this whole center, and maybe even this length. Okay, that's good. 
um, you can see that this dimension intersected so either move the view or move the dimension just so it's clean and clear now that I've got five inches here I don't have to put five inches here so there's no reason to add have a double dimension there so don't put another one there it just messes it up I do need to know what these holes are so I can smart dimension these holes okay in this case what this dimension did was it put remember this is a 440 tapped hole so SolidWorks assumed that I wanted to put the tap drill for the material in my model for this hole so you have to be careful and make sure that the material is selected properly in your SolidWorks part or I prefer to tell the machinist the intent behind this hole what was that hole supposed to really be so I double click items like this down here is what it's dropped in it's dropped in the diameter and the dimension I like to kill that and it says it's going to disable the tolerance display yeah that's fine with me and I like to put what it really is drill and tap 440 and then I'm going to say a depth and they give you a bunch of symbols this symbol happens to be depth so I'm going to click that symbol and then I'm going to give it a dimension I don't know what that dimension was let's just say it was uh, I mean you could go back to the model and you could go to this tapped hole edit feature how deep did I say that was blah 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 you get the point so I'm gonna go in here and just just hard code in something Oh, okay now you're now you caught me um, yeah 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 let's say I'm gonna say three-eighths of an inch 0.375 inches okay now you can dimension that and it's kind of goofy because it, it it looks all goofy right you could put a you could put a return in here and that helps or instead of dimensioning this you can go to annotation and you can put a note and that gives you a few more options on how to write this out it makes a little box and a little arrow and I think that's a little cleaner and you can still write in the same thing drill and tap for 40 and then your symbols are in here somewhere uh, I'm not going to spend time finding it but you can do that you can change the font make it a smaller size I just wanted to show you that you can use this annotation bar it it shows a whole bunch of cool thing there's there's a surface finish weld symbols hole call outs etc another thing you might want to put in this note is how many so you can put two places then the machinist knows that you're going to do that one too so that's helpful okay questions there all right now we could go start dimensioning this stuff um, there's a there's a there's there's some we've got a lot of holes in this plate so one nice way to dimension a lot of different size holes all over a plate rather than putting these ordinate dimensions is because it's going to get kind of messy a, a way you could do it is you could put notes and we could have um, no arrow on the note um, there's a way to put that in So I'm just going to put I'm just going to put a note 
and we'll take the arrow off later. But what you could do is put a note in and have it be A. Okay. Now, in this case, I wouldn't put the little arrow, so I'd go into these options and get rid of that arrow. But you could put A there and there and there and there because there's four A's. And then off to the side here, you could insert a table. So uh, tables, and you could put a whole table. And you could have A, B, C, and, and you can put in, so it'll say A there, and then you can write what, what flavor of hole that is. In this case, I believe this is a 440 tapped hole through the plate for each, four of them. And then you could have A, 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 A. And that would be a nice, clean way to do that. Then you could have B, 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 B. Those are the holes for the pillars. Okay? So you could put a table in there. All right? So that would be a nice way to do that. Um, for this example... You could, in order for a machinist to do this properly, he would, without the computerized file, he would have to know the diameter of that circle, he'd have to know the center position of that circle, and he'd have to know all these distances here and these fillets. Okay? You could do that. It's going to make it a little more busy, but you could do that. You could... You could also write a note that says reference such and such digital file, right? So you could say, go look at this SolidWorks part file, all right? And then if you provide that machinist that part file, they could probably import it and then use it to on a CNC. Um, you could also do a different kind of view. You could do a, um, a detail view. So you could do detail view, and maybe you pull this circle here. I got that a little, I got that a little crazy, but you could drop that view in there. Clearly, I want to change the scale. But I could drop that view in, detail A, and then it shows this circle for A, and it zooms in on that, and then you can give more dimensions there. Okay, so that's, that's an idea. You can do, in this case, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but you could do section views where you cut, make a cut somewhere. going to get kind of busy. And I don't like the way I did that. Section view. Let's uh, so select cutting line and place it on a view. So if this is my line, that's where I'm going to cut this in half. So select the cutting line and we'll select OK to place it and I'll just place it over this view. So it's as if I cut this and if you look at it, it says view C and it's got little arrows that tell you to look this way, cut this thing in this direction, look this way and you'll see this. So it doesn't, this kind of view doesn't really help on this plate, but if you have weird features, like let's say there was a little uh, snap ring groove inside that hole, this would be a good place to show that detail. Another good view is a break view. A break. It's not going to be super helpful on this one, but let's break this view 
and do a zigzag cut and you can bring the zigzag anywhere you want and drop it in there and it'll put a uh, escaped it out of there this view is really good <coughs> so a double click there and I got a break view this view is really good if you have parts that are ridiculously long for their thickness or their diameter. So let's say you had a piece of all thread that was six foot long, but it was only a half inch in diameter. That's gonna look, it's gonna be very hard at that uh, ratio to see any kind of detail on a drawing, right? If it's six foot to a half inch, that's a huge ratio. So you use the break view, and that basically you can zoom in and say, to a, 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 an area this long and say, hey, this whole thing is six feet long, but I'm only looking at this much of it. I put a break in there to designate that it's broken and there's something missing in the middle. All right, so that's really helpful for long skinny parts. All right, I got a couple more things, but they're not incredibly useful things. So basically, you've seen most of what you're going to need for your college career for drawings. Make sure that you have everything dimensioned, unlike the Lego part I gave you. There was a dimension missing. Make sure that you have critical information in your title block that, that helps the machinist or the engineer understand what they're reading. Make sure that you make your drawings clean and clear unlike this one with all these views intersecting um, make sure you have enough dimensions and that you're not duplicating dimensions um, one last thing I do want to show is if you dimension say countersinks so in this case this was a countersink all that all that SolidWorks dropped in was a 0.261 so what I'd rather do is dimension you can put a, a chamfer dimension in or you can just put a, a note or I could dimension this hole and then that tells me the diameter of that hole but then I could put a countersink dimension that's countersink and this one here is counter bore this is diameter degrees plus or minus center line depth those are the really common ones there's a there's a whole palette full of other symbols but I could put a countersink dimension and then I could tell it the dimension of that countersink 0 0.261 diameter 82 degrees and then I could give it a depth and that tells me where to countersink it and again I'd want to put four places or put that in a table what does 82 degrees mean? so the 82 degrees is that standard screw size oh. and that's because you as the engineer wanted to put an 82 degree screw right there and that is because it was bolting that base plate to the pillars. Right here. Or up here. See that? Okay. That's it for today. Um, should we pass out the tooling quiz? Yeah. It's quick, so I know we'll go a little bit over, but you can handle a couple minutes. Go ahead and take that and turn it in right now. So again, for part four, you'll need to come up and look at the tools up there. Uh, I believe for part two, we will need to pull up a drill and cap chart.
So at least it's your chart. So feel free to use the Google for that. 